Okay, so I'm feeling slightly attacked by the idea that there are things I don't know about my own body. I mean, it's my body, so surely I know everything about it. As it turns out, I didn't, and that's quite concerning. From having no muscles in your fingers to babies without kneecaps, here are 15 weird things you didn't know about your own body. Number 15. We have different earwax types. Most of us know that we have earwax to keep our ears clean. It's produced by glands in our ear canals to maintain the ear canals and allow us to hear. It also works to maintain the correct pH level, protect against infections and dryness, and trap dirt. Surprisingly, though, we all have different earwax types based on our genetics and where we're from. If you're of European or African descent, your earwax is probably wetter, thicker, and stickier because it contains more lipids. If you're from East Asia, it's it's likely to be drier and flakier. Scientists actually think that dry earwax is a genetic mutation from over 2,000 generations ago in Asian populations, which is around 50,000 years. Surprisingly, because of the genes in people with dry, flaky earwax, they're also less likely to have smelly armpits. Your body odor and earwax type can go hand in hand. If you're not of Asian descent and have dry earwax, you may have an ear infection or eczema. In that case, it may be worth seeing a doctor to run some tests. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. You'll have a new skeleton in 10 years. Unless we break one of our bones, we probably don't spare much thought for our skeleton. It's doing a great job of keeping us upright, and we don't even give it any credit. But now might be time to thank your skeleton, because it's working hard to replace itself every 10 years. That's right, your skeleton is brand spanking new every decade. Bones do many things, like protect our vital organs, offer space for our bone marrow, and store the calcium our bodies need for organs and cells. Our skeletons also give our muscles support so that we can use and move our limbs. When our skeletons form and grow to their adult size, this is called modeling. When it regenerates itself every 10 years, it's remodeling. This process involves removing old bone pieces and replacing them with new bone tissue. By doing so, your skeleton and cells can remain healthy and strong while still providing your body with calcium. In young, healthy adults, your bones are removed at the same pace they are replaced. However, as you age, you may lose more than you replace, which leads to bone diseases like osteoporosis. Number 13. You're taller in the morning than at night. If you've ever complained about being slightly shorter than your friend or sibling, then ask to measure against them in the morning. You're actually at your tallest at this time of day. Measure yourself in the morning and at night if you don't believe me. You're going to be about one centimeter taller first thing in the morning. There's a strange reason for it. Experts believe that gravity when you're sitting or standing leads to compression of your cartilage, spine, and other parts of your body during the day. This includes the cartilage in your knees. When you're lying down or resting at night, your spine is able to decompress or spread out. So when you get up in the morning, gravity hasn't had a chance to play with your body. The same thing has been shown in astronauts. When they come back from space, they're often a few inches taller than their regular height on Earth. This is because there aren't any gravitational forces affecting their spine. Once they return to Earth, they'll squash back down to their regular height again. Number 12. Kids grow faster in summer. If you work in a school environment or attend school, you may have noticed how some kids change so much when they come back from summer break. 
It's almost like they're a different person sometimes. Even though not that much time has passed, summer can actually be when many children do much of their growing compared to other times of the year. Climate doesn't affect our growth, but seasons do. Both boys and girls experience more growth in spring and summer than they do in autumn and winter. According to the Sunlight Institute, research also suggests that sunlight exposure could be a factor. In a year-long study with 118 children from 14 countries, growth was measured and compared to the amount of sunlight they were exposed to. Those who were exposed to more experienced faster growth. The same investigators also found that circadian clock pathways could also influence growth. While there's no definite reason for the growth, there are a couple of sound ideas. Vitamin D could help produce larger, stronger bones. However, serotonin, endorphins, and nitric oxide may also play a part. Number 11. Babies don't have kneecaps. Don't mind me, I'm just about to blow your mind. Did you know that babies don't have kneecaps? Or at least they don't have the same kind of kneecaps that we have as fully grown adults. When babies are born, they have pieces of cartilage in the area around their knees. This cartilage will eventually become kneecaps, but the process doesn't happen for some time. If they were born with fully developed kneecaps, they could create all kinds of problems. The birthing process may be more complex, and birth injuries may also be more common. As you know, bone is very hard and far less flexible than cartilage. If the wrong type of pressure was applied during the birthing process, there's a genuine risk of something breaking. Having bone may also make it harder for kids to transition from crawling to walking. The cartilage starts to turn into bone when the child is between two and six years old. It then doesn't become a fully developed bone until the child is around 10 or 12 years old. Who knew? Number 10. Your bones are stronger than steel. If you want to build the strongest house to withstand anything, don't build it out of steel. Instead, make it out of bones. Sure, the cops will come, it'll be a huge thing, but at least you'll have a strong house. What I'm trying to say here is that your bones are pretty much stronger than steel. Disclaimer, don't actually build a house out of bones. Let's just put things into perspective of just how strong bones are. Your knee joint will serve you well for at least 60 to 80 years. That's six or eight decades of daily use. If you were to get a knee replacement which isn't made of the same stuff, you'd only get around a quarter of that time out of it. Bone is made up of collagen fibers with water, protein, living cells, and blood vessels. This combination of materials allows our bones to handle up to 20 times our own body weight in tension, torsion, shear, and compression. Now that is just incredible. Engineers have tried to replicate bone as close as possible for replacement parts, but they just haven't managed to master it. That's why medical professionals often take bone from other parts of your body and place it where you need it the most. Otherwise, they have to use synthetic products that just aren't as strong. Number 9. Your feet have a quarter of your bones. Your skeleton is made up of 206 bones. Did you know that one quarter of those bones are in your feet? I even thought I was lying for a second, but I've done my homework. Both of your feet have 33 joints, 26 bones, 19 muscles, and a whopping 107 ligaments, and that's in each foot. Some people have 28 bones in each foot, and if you have the condition called polydactylism, which means you have extra toes, then you have even more. While we're talking about feet, we may as well share some other surprising facts about them. The skin on the soles of your feet is thicker than anywhere else on your body. Your toenails also grow slower than your fingernails, and each foot has over 250,000 sweat glands. So it's probably not of any surprise to you that they can produce up to half a pint of moisture each day. No wonder some people's socks and shoes smell so bad. Stand on the ground and pay attention to your feet. If your whole foot touches the ground, you have flat feet. Young children often start Start with flat feet because they haven't yet formed arches, but some people never will. Number 8. Your ears have the smallest bones. 
Out of all 206 bones in our bodies, the smallest one can be found in your ear. Which makes sense if you think about it, given how small our ears are compared to the other parts of our bodies. The tiny bone found in your ear is called the stapes, and it's just 3 millimeters long, or a bit smaller than a pea. Its name, stapes, comes from the Latin word for stirrup, and it does look like the stirrup for a horse. The stirrup sits in with two other bones called incus and malleus. Just like stapes, they also get their names from what they look like. Incus is the Latin word for anvil, and malleus is the Latin word for hammer. If that's not cool enough, all three bones are referred to as ossicles, which means little bones. Learning anatomy is easy. The job of this tiny bone is to move sound waves from the outer ear to the inner ear, while also making them quieter. Because of their location, the ossicles are not bones you can easily break, although it has happened. A stapes fracture has occurred due to a landmine explosion. Number 7. Aging Changes Your Body Shape have you ever looked back at a photo of yourself from years earlier only to be shocked at how much your body has changed? We're not talking about adulthood to childhood, but that weird period between being an older adult and a young adult. Aging really does change your body. Sure, your lifestyle choices play a huge part in how different your body will be at other parts of your life, but you don't have complete control over the process. Our bodies are made up of water, bones, muscles, and organs called lean tissue and fat. After around the age of 30, many people start to lose the lean tissue. Around this time, your organs and muscles can also begin to lose some of their cells in a process called atrophy. As you become even older, your bones can lose their minerals, and you may end up with a condition called osteopenia, which turns into osteoporosis. After the age of 30, it's also likely that how much body fat you have also goes up. Older people, compared to when they were younger, have around one-third more body fat. This builds up towards your body's center and around your internal organs. Wow, aging is so fun! Number 6. Your fingers have no muscles. When you hear that your fingers have no muscles, you'll probably say, that can't be right. After all, who's in a better position to open a pickle jar? A plumber that regularly turns taps and valves on and off, or an office worker who just clicks a mouse all day? The plumber. Duh. So how can it be that you can't have muscles in your fingers that get stronger with more use? Well, because they're elsewhere in your hand. Your hand is essentially the puppeteer for your digits. The muscles that move your fingers are actually in your forearms and palms. They are only connected to your fingers by tendons. Surprisingly, the muscles that move your hands typically start from around the elbow region and run down your forearm, across the wrist, and into your hand. Some muscles are designed to keep your wrists and hands steady, while others let your fingers and thumbs grip things. The muscles that allow your pinky finger and thumb to move are actually located in your hand and start at the carpal bone. So if you've been making your fingers perform many press-ups, it's probably better to focus on your hands and wrists. Number 5. Your pinky makes up half your hand strength. The pinky finger never seems like it's up to much. You don't rely on it to hold a drink, open a door, or do anything else, really. But as unimportant as it seems, this digit is actually responsible for around half the strength in your hand. According to a certified hand therapist, you would lose around 50% of the strength in your hand if you were to lose your pinky finger. Your ring finger and pinky finger act as a power bottom, while your thumb, middle finger, and index finger are responsible for the dexterity. A study carried out at the University of Western Ontario found that if you lost your ring finger and pinky finger, grip reduction might be as much as 67%. Some other sources state that it's not so much 50% strength you lose through the loss of your pinky finger, but 50% reduction in your cylindrical grasp due to the altering of your mechanical positioning. Still, I'm not about to prove either of these experts right or wrong, but what I am gonna do is pay more attention to just how much I use my pinky finger. Number 4. Your tongue is the only muscle that doesn't join two bones. 
Let's talk about the tongue. It's a bit unusual, isn't it? It doesn't just look weird, it is weird. Tongues perform physiologic functions such as gustatory sensation or tasting and mastication or chewing. They also help with sound and speech formation. Our tongues are the only muscles in our bodies that aren't connected to bones at both ends. Instead, they are only connected to the hyoid bone at one end, and this bone isn't connected to any other bone in the body either. Hell absurd, since every other bone is connected to another. But that's not the only interesting and absurd thing about tongues. They're made up of heaps of individual muscles that help with our chewing and speaking. The surface of the tongue, or upper skin, contains between 2,000 and 8,000 taste buds. Everyone's different, though, which is why that average number is so broad. And while we're on the subject, what you may also not have known about tongues is that they are susceptible to several problems. If you suffer nerve damage in your tongue, you can experience problems with chewing and speaking. If you infect or injure your taste buds, you may experience taste abnormalities. And if you experience pain in your tongue, it can be anything from anemia to mouth ulcers through to mouth cancer. Number 3. Your hair knows when you sleep. As creepy as it sounds, your hair knows when you sleep. Previously, researchers thought that human circadian clock genes were only found in the brain. But as it turns out, they are also present in tissues throughout our bodies, including our hair follicles. Researchers from a university in Japan plucked hairs from beards and scalps and found that they contained cell-rich follicles. After extracting RNA from the cells, they discovered that circadian gene activities peaked when the people those hairs were from were alert and awake. They also peaked at their earliest in the volunteer who woke up the earliest in the morning. After disrupting the sleep-wake cycle of volunteers, they noticed the hair follicle circadian gene activity had also been disrupted. The same was seen in shift workers. Researchers monitored people who worked a 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. shift one week, a 3 p.m. to 12 a.m. shift the following week, and back to the morning shift on their third week. Their clock gene activity lagged five hours behind their lifestyles, which showed that that the body clock was not able to adapt in a short three-week period. Number 2. Our Nails Grow Strangely Most people probably wouldn't put that much thought into their toenail and fingernail growth rates. When they get too long and annoying, we cut them and leave it at that. But people are actually researching this sort of thing and have found out some surprising information. Like, for some reason, our nails are growing far quicker than what studies showed decades ago. Our fingernails also grow nearly twice as fast as our toenails. If you're a nail biter, you probably haven't noticed this. But a study with 22 healthy young people in the US showed that the average fingernail grew 3.47 millimeters compared to toenails that only grew 1.62 millimeters in the same period. Your pinky finger also grows the slowest out of all your fingernails, but your big toenail grows the fastest. If you're a man, your nails may grow slightly quicker than any female in your life. Surprisingly, nail growth also slows down when you age. And if you're a nail biter, your nails grow faster than those of people who don't bite their nails. You probably won't look at your nails the same way again. Number 1. Your body position affects your memory. You could blow me over with a feather after learning this fact. Your body position can affect your memory, as in the way you position yourself can spur up memories from your past. You may already know that when you see something, smell something, or notice something, some old memories come to the surface that you may not know you had, like smelling a particular perfume and being reminded of your grandma, or for me, listening to the Eminem Show album and being reminded of playing Twisted Metal 2. Researchers have discovered that you may have a more accurate and faster way to access specific memories if you hold your body in a particular position. For example, if you hold a baby, you might be better positioned to remember an event while holding a baby in the past. You may not recall that memory if you weren't holding a baby. Those same researchers found out this information by having volunteers assume different positions and asking them to remember events from their lives. From those findings, they were able to determine that regardless of age, memories were remembered sooner when a body position matched a memory. Older adults remembered slower, but both older and younger people showed the same pattern. 
just when I thought I knew everything there is to know about the human body, I come to learn that we have brand new skeletons in a decade? That's just insane. Out of all these facts, which ones surprised you the most, and which ones did you already know? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.